So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. everybody at home and welcome to another exciting episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Katie and I'm Clark and today we're here at the University of Connecticut's Avery Point campus. We're learning about citizen science. Citizen science? What's that? I'm not sure. Let's go talk to Dr. Penny and find out. <laughs> Let's go. Hey guys, today we're talking about citizen science. Hi Dr. Penny, how are you? Hello, you're just in time. We're talking about citizen science. Cool. So what is citizen science? Citizen science is a way of getting everybody involved in scientific measurements, even though you might not be a trained scientist or being paid as a professional scientist. So kids just like us can get involved. Absolutely. This is a way to empower anybody in any community so that they can take a leadership role or take affirmative action and uh, assess their own environments. There are a lot of chemicals in the environments. There are a lot of changes going on and it's hard for managers in general localities to keep track of every single thing. So it helps a lot if local citizens take an active role and start making measurements. Where are these chemicals coming from? Well, there are two places. There's a group of natural chemicals that we'd like to monitor, and there are also a lot of man-made chemicals that we want to monitor. So we make chemicals because we have certain uses for them, but then they make their way in the environment and they do things that we may not have intended them for. So we have to keep track of that. And if you're living somewhere, it's hard to find out exactly what's in your water all the time, and it's hard for even local governments to, to manage that all the time because there are so many things out there. So there are a lot of communities that are putting together groups of volunteers who are willing to come together to certain waterways and measure, take measurements on a regular basis, record the measurements, and then save, share them with other people. So can you give us some examples as to where these chemicals are coming from? Mm -hmm. Some of the natural chemicals are coming right from the waterways when algae, there are harmful algae that can make toxins that can have harmful effects on humans. They're, very, they're actually poisonous, and we don't want them in your food that you eat, that you actually farm from the sea, and you don't want them in your water. And then there are some chemicals that we make, that we use, like Scotchgard, that we spray on things because it makes them water resistant, but that we use it so much that we get a lot of the stuff out in the environment, and it starts to build up. These things don't break down, and it's those kind of chemicals that we really want to make sure we know about and we measure their concentrations well. I've heard there have been problems with hormones in the water. How does that happen? Absolutely. Well, a lot of the compounds that we make look like the hormones that our body makes, but our body's not used to or hasn't adapted to getting all this stuff from outside. So even things like PCBs and compounds that we use for electrical equipment actually look like hormones to the body. So fish and humans who get exposed to this stuff actually have hormone, have different reactions in their body that we didn't intend and we have to be concerned about. A lot of the um, medicines that humans, that we take, that the antibiotics that you get when you get sick and you're prescribed by the doctor, all that stuff gets, goes in and gets flushed out. So some of it gets used by your body, but a lot of it ends up in the sewers. So one of the other greatest inputs into the environment are the wastewater treatment effluents and just the waters that we flush down the sink every day. What type of citizen science groups are out there? Well, citizen science has actually been around for a really long time. There have been groups who have been monitoring even migration of birds and tagging birds for a long time. And that's led or created very valuable records. The uh, NASA actually has a citizen science effort out there where people who are amateurs use their telescopes and try to make observations and report those observations and now now that we've got better instruments out there that are easier to use and more reliable now the National Science Foundation and NOAA and other government organizations are supporting environmental citizen science so that really has just evolved over the last 10 years but the cool thing is that there are a lot of organizations out there that you guys can contact in your local communities if you want to measure and if you care about what your waterways look like. So what types of measurements can people take? 
most community groups have been measuring temperature, salinity, and oxygen in the water, and there are a lot of sensors out there for that. Another measurement people make is looking at the water levels in their local community so that their community can be prepared for changes that happen over the years. Another thing people are looking at now is how acidic the water is, because that changes who's going to live in the water and who can or can't. And then some groups are actually getting really sophisticated and starting to look at nutrients and looking at nitrogen and uh, ammonium concentrations in the water. What we wanted to do was to expand what people could measure and we know that there's a lot of concern nowadays about what kind of chemicals we put into the environment. We wanted to come up with a way to give people a chance to measure what's in their water. So this is what we're going to uh, do today, is to look at chemical concentration. We're going to deploy a sensor that's going to measure chemical concentrations in the water. All hands on deck. When we return, the AquaKids participate in citizen science.